What's up everyone, John from ARTV. It's time for a review of the highly anticipated rap album, Run The Jewels 3. RTJ3 by rap duo Killer Mike LP, Run The Jewels. Their last project, their last full length at least, not Meow The Jewels, Run The Jewels 2 dropped in 2014. Meow The Jewels was a crowdfunded project that dropped early 2016, I believe it was, and it was just kind of hilarious how they used cat sounds to actually make up all of the beats of the songs on RTJ2. I couldn't believe that they actually did it, but LP followed through on that promise. And after loving RTJ2, I went back and checked out their debut. Also excellent. Just so many great tracks, a lot of killer flows, back and forth switching between Mike and LP. They've got great chemistry. This initially started as just a little one-off thing. They actually talk about it on this thing. They're like, oh, make some money, get out. But they had such a good chemistry and there was such a good reception to it that they stuck together, bonded over the music, and continued making something great. Now, on this new LP, we got a few pre-release singles like the fantastic and mesmerizing, kind of a hypnotizing beat, really, on Legend Has It, that was one of the singles, 2100 featuring a recurring guest, Boots, who you might know for doing a lot of production on Beyonce's self-titled record, and a couple of other well-known pop records in recent times, obviously being on RTJ2 as well. 2100, not one of my top favorites, but still a very solid track that really kind of solidifies the theme that they are talking about here, kind of an impending doom of where we are at in society. And it's also talking about being comfortable with, I guess, yourself and your surroundings where you're gotten being okay with the achievements that you have. It's kind of like they've achieved victory and now they're just kind of continuing on with what they want to do and pushing forward the themes that they want to. This is a very lyrical album once again. What else would you expect from Run the Jewels, Killer Mike, and LP dropping a lot of great punchlines here, some sick pop culture references, some ones that were kind of like throwbacks in a way and some ones that you wouldn't really see coming. I love that they do that here and there was one in particular you know that if you go to genius you're gonna see that annotated it's like I like knowing that I could figure it out before I actually went to that point there's a war of the worlds reference where LP is talking about causing chaos so much panic that you'll think war of the worlds on the radio back in the day that was something that people thought was real Orson Welles narrated that and it was in the 1940s I believe and at that time everybody was getting their information from the radio so I really think that that's cool how he used that to kind of talk about how they are bringing chaos and they're bringing these themes of chaos and the end of the world with everything going on in our society right here and kind of implementing that into some older pop culture references. And you see that again, he actually references Mr. Ed, the 1960s talking horse show at the beginning of Report to the Shareholders, the final and crucial track, just the impending doom point of this record that is so fantastic. Zach De La Roca features on that track that I was talking about, at least in the second half, which is Kill Your Masters, a killer hook on that thing. I just keep coming back to that one over and over again. Now, there are some more emotionally heavy tracks on here. Obviously, ones like Thursday in the Danger Room, probably just one of the most heartfelt and just kind of tears you apart type tracks that Run the Jewels have done up to this point in their career. They're kind of talking about friends that have died at this point in their life, and we're getting two separate stories from Killer Mike and LP. LP talking about a friend that died of an illness, most people are assuming, and then Killer Mike talking about someone who was killed for their chain, just on the streets killed in cold blood. But I like that Killer Mike seems to be at this point in his life where he's not just wanting to be vicious and get revenge. He, they definitely do have some more braggadocious tracks, ones where they feel like they're just kind of running a little victory lap. But at the same time, they are down to earth in the sense that they want something more for the people who maybe did die and also the people that did kill his friend. He's saying, I hope that you go on to make your mother proud. I hope that you go on to recorrect yourself and do your life in better fashion. Let's talk about the production on this thing because it is fucking fantastic. Just some of the beats on here will fuck you up every single time. Call Ticketron, one that is right off of the bat, an instant favorite. The bass on it is so heavy, so down there, almost kind of like lining the entire texture of the song, wrapping it up and then throwing it in your face. It's so heavy and such a catchy track as well. Run the Jewels live at the garden talking about how they're kind of flexing at this point, like saying, you know what? We went from this to doing this. They actually opened for Jack White at the garden, the Madison 
Madison Square Garden that is in New York. Pretty much talking about how their popularity has skyrocketed to this point and they're taking off doing the world tour that's coming up along with this new record. I love that. That moment is huge. RTJ is a huge thing that Run the Jewels always implement into their beats. It seems like they do different variations of that using like Run Jewels or Run and Jewels Fast like on Close Your Eyes and Count to Fuck on RTJ2. Here on Legend Has It we have the stuttered R. TJ, which is pretty much cut up and used all throughout, throughout this shifting bass groove that really this track legend has it falls into. I love the lyrical flows and the switch offs between Killer Mike and LP on this one. It really shows why they are so relevant in the world of rap today. Easily one of the most interesting things in the world of rap. I know I don't review or even listen to a ton, maybe not as much as I should, but Run the Jewels always catch my attention. I know a lot of people were very excited to see rapper Danny Brown in the track list on track number five, Hey Kids, and he does not disappoint. I haven't listened to a ton of his music. I know I need to change that, but he has a sick flow and some of the best lines on the entire record on here. The whole Xanax comparison and everything like that, just listen to it for yourself. That opening line, how he starts things off, that little paragraph there, uh, it's, it's, I don't know, it's some of the most clever stuff that I've heard in rap in a while. And all throughout RTJ3, I was very, very impressed, especially Hey Kids. I think they did a fantastic job of working everyone in and giving everybody the spotlight. Self-love and positivity is a big thing on this album and obviously the album cover like LP kind of alluded to there he was saying you know you've got the gold cover over it now because you got to feel good about yourself and try to make the best out of the crazy world around you all the chaos that's going on the new president and everything like that everything that's going on in our country and just all throughout the world tensions are high and RTJ are really commenting on a lot of these issues and things going on there and stay gold is a big one that obviously fits with the album cover. You know, we were seeing on RTJ2, the bandage tans healing the wounds. This time around, they've got the extra coating on there to really protect themselves against that. And I can definitely see the shift in style, at least somewhat. I mean, some of the songs are very similar in what they're talking about, but here I can definitely see a sense of recovery. It's just like they've made it over this little hump here, and now they're more so commenting on where they feel like they're at at this point. Obviously, it's okay for them to be very confident and braggadocious on some of these tracks. And one of my favorites, in fact, is Panther Like a Panther, the Miracle Mix, an absolute banger. I'm the shit, bitch. They comment on this track with a great hook on it. I really like Trina on this thing, along with Killer Mike and LP. The beat really just goes hard, and it's kind of got this eerie beat as it shifts more so into that second chorus, and I don't know, it kind of gives you kind of a Halloween type thing. And I've seen a lot of people commenting that, saying that it reminds them of the John Carpenter Halloween score, and I can definitely see why I might pay homage to that. It's definitely something that caught my attention. And speaking with that self-love as well, I have to talk about Down, featuring Joe Gilliam, Joy Gilliam, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. That's the opening track on this LP, and I definitely see this as one where they're talking about how, you know, I could have done this, I could have fallen off, I could have gone down the road of not paying attention to myself and just gone into obscurity, but they didn't do that. And especially Killer Mike here really seems to be hitting the nail on the head with how, you know, I could have done I could have done this. I could have taken my eyes off of the prize, but I kept going and look what's happened. Run the Jewels is one of the most successful things, at least in kind of the bubbling underworld of rap music. They get a ton of appreciation now, and I think that they feel very confident in that, as they should. Shifting back to the politics, two big ones here come in the form of back-to-back -back tracks, Don't Get Captured, and Thieves Scream the Ghost, ones that focus on race relations in the United States right now, obviously with all the shootings going on, with police officers, just how things seem to be in an all-time high. It's like you could cut the tension with a knife. And we see on Don't Get Captured, it's basically saying all these things like maybe you did something wrong. They're looking at a black person that might have done something and they're looking for any reason to stop and frisk or put your hands in the air, whatever it might be. And we've seen way too much violence, way too many shootings. And we see here on that and Thieves Scream the Ghost where they're talking about kind of the violence in Chicago and the areas and obviously everything that was going on with the shooting, I believe, of Trayvon Martin and just kind of some of the rioting that they saw. They're kind of commenting on that and they're basically looking for any reason to call people of color like just rioters or looters causing trouble for no reason when really they've been oppressed kind of like they somehow know like what everyone is thinking and they put a general spin on it and he actually references killer mike dummy don on cnn referencing one of their news anchors that commented how he smelled weed at some of the riots that were going on at that time and almost kind of blaming it on that saying like oh they smoke weed they do this they're violent they're 
their animals and that sort of thing. And they're basically pulling it back in and saying, hey, it's something where there's a lot more to the story than that. And I love that we get both LP, obviously a white guy and Killer Mike, a black guy. So we see two different perspectives and how a white guy can come in and say, look, this is ignorant. This is bullshit. Let's put an end to this. And it's just like not all white people feel a certain way about black people and not all black people by any means do these things that people are thinking that they do. So I love that they kind of bring this to an all time tension here and really start to call people out. I think the final track that I want to shed a little bit of light on is Oh Mama. That's track number 12. This is the longest project that Run the Jewels have done, by the way, 51 minutes and 14 songs, but it is totally worth it. Easily an immersing experience, but Oh Mama has a little bit of a different flow to it and beat. Changing the subject, if you will, kind of talking about things and kind of recalling earlier days with how both of their parents felt about maybe cursing, rapping, the violence that they might have possibly gotten into on the streets, their moms not knowing where they were at night and that sort of thing. And I like that. And I love the part in here. It's one of Killer Mike's verses where he's like cursing at his mother and basically she fires back at him. Don't curse at your mother, God damn it. Basically cursing him in return and being a hypocrite in a sense he's saying, but I don't really feel like there's a ton of hostility there. I feel like it's kind of a recalling track, kind of a recollection of a lot of memories, and it's definitely going down as one of my favorites. There's a few that I'm just not vibing with quite as much, but honestly, the majority of this record grew on me more and more. At first, I was thinking this is a step down from Run the Jewels, but at this point, I feel like it's pretty much on par for the course. I ended up giving that one a 4.5 in the long run. I upgraded my 4 out of 5 score, and besides a couple of tracks here, like 2100, I'm not coming back to as much. I don't know, something about the beat and just the flow on the track doesn't catch my ear quite as much as some of these others. Just look at other singles like Legend Has It and even Talk To Me. Some fantastic moments on this LP that I'm digging a whole lot more. And then I look to like 2100 and even Everybody Stay Calm, a track that I do agree with the majority of the lyrical message there. It's a good song from that point of view, but something about it just isn't quite getting the job done for me personally. But keep in mind, these are all just my opinions. Take it for what you will. I know I'll probably get a ton of comments like, oh, white boy reviewing rap music or this guy doesn't know anything about rap music. I'm not claiming to know everything in the world about it, and it's just absolutely absurd to use race to say that somebody can't comment on some type of music. LP is fucking white, and I know that you guys, the majority of you at least, seem to love Run the Jewels, so I guess I'm just a little bit tired of getting that comment. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the review of Run the Jewels 3. Me, personally, I'm going with a 4.5 out of 5. Really love this album. Be sure to smash the like button on it to let me know that you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel because friends don't let friends go unsubscribed. You can check right here for my review of RTJ2 or another rap review right here. Find me on social media linked in the description. Keep in mind, it was all just my opinion. Comment yours down below, and I'll see you very soon right here on ARTV.